Yo, what is up guys? It's Ark here, finally back with another Clash Royale video after I don't know how many weeks, like two or three weeks of not recording. I'm back again and you can probably guess what I'm going to show you next. I guess you must have read the thumbnail, but I'm gonna show you. I got, I, I finally got 20 wins in this godforsaken challenge. Took me more tries than I would have liked to. But we out here, we qualified for CCGS phase 2, that's all good, let's claim this 250k goal right here, that's juicy, and I'll show you the deck that I did it with, which is this right here, Lockbait. Uh, what do I say, Lockbait is probably one of the most skillful and most enjoyable decks in the game, especially because of how easily you can just, whoops. Outcycle your opponent. Whoops! Outcycle your opponent. Trick them with all those juke barrels and whatnot. It it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, that was just awesome. So let's just open the chest first, and then we'll hop into a couple of replays against lots of different matchups, which I am really excited to talk about because, man, I can't really contain myself at this point. I. I've just been thinking about this challenge all night long. I've been losing sleep because of this. I keep getting like 17, 16, 14 wins. And then I finally got 20. So I'm just overjoyed. Now, Logbait has a couple of tricky matchups. One being Hog Rider. Now, these two Hog Rider decks, they're pretty annoying for Logbait. Mainly because they have Log and they have Lightning. And now the... The log bait with tornado is even more annoying because it's triple spell, and that's log bait's biggest enemy. That's triple spell. So outplaying these decks is really important, and your best bet is to basically not inferno. You can't use an inferno on the hog. You have to pretty much rely on ice spirit and uh, goblin gang to take care of the hog. Those will negate 100% of the hog rider's damage. And mostly your opponent will be reluctant to log the goblin gang because they ideally want to save their log for your, um, what you may call it, goblin, goblin barrel. Uh, so yeah, but first I'm going to show you this pretty good comeback that I had against, um, where is it? Yeah, I think this was it. Yeah, this was, this was an absolutely unreal comeback against Nico67. I misplayed so hard in the beginning, but I was able to basically recognize that I could get free rockets. A lot of the time, a lot of the times you will have to rocket cycle your opponent because your goblin barrels just won't do enough damage if they can counter them efficiently. So here I log his um, goblins and use my knight to counter the bandit. Knight is probably one of the best bandit counters in the game, if not the best. And I just Ice Spirit to cycle. It's really important to keep cycling in this deck. Now here he gets a good little minor connection and his bat, his single bat deals a bunch of damage. And he's able to negate a lot of the damage from my Goblin Barrel as well. Actually that was a pretty bad counter from him. He, he pretty messed that up pretty hard. And I just log again because I need to keep cycling, keep out cycling his spells and getting my damage off. So here, I don't know what I do. I definitely shouldn't have played my Inferno there. I should have played my Knight. So here's where I mess up hard because his uh, Bandit just connects and his Bats connect, his Miner connects, and I'm in trouble right now. I really am. At this point, I was thinking, well, that's GG. Nothing I can do here. Because Bats are just so strong. The fifth Bat added so much more. Uh, power to this card because uh, not only do the bats like always not always but most of the time they do reach your tower but they just have so much dps it's crazy they'll just melt down your tanks if you don't address them so taking zap in this uh meta is definitely a viable option especially just oh, solely because of the bats and they're pretty much in every deck so here he gets a good prediction poison and I recognize that he's probably low on elixir, so I just rock it anyways. Not like I had any other option. At this point, I just need to start rocket cycling. So here he goes on the opposite lane. That's smart by him. But he should have definitely added something more to this push. If he had added bats to this push, I would have been in trouble. But here I predict his... Um... 
What do I predict? Goblins. Yeah, I predict this goblin. So that was well played by me. And then I get a free goblin barrel off. So this is definitely going into the two, two crown game. And I also predicted his minor with my knight. So we are looking good right now. We're definitely looking good because we have the momentum in our hands, even though he is at an elixir advantage. The issue with him is that this dude leaked too much elixir and that is what pretty much cost him the game. He leaked a lot. He didn't play cards for a while. Here I wasn't able to protect. Oh, I was able to protect my princess. So that was clutch. With this deck, if you get like three or two, three princesses on the map at once, that you just, you auto win. That's just the name of the game. And now I don't know, he goes for a greedy miner here. That was pretty bad from him. I My princesses are just doing work. I lock to clean everything up. And now I have two princesses just shooting at the tower. He's forced to waste his poison. And I do know that he doesn't have any lock. So I what I try to do here is play my goblin, goblin barrel and place the knife in the middle for maximum damage. I probably should have defended that uh, bandit, but that's fine, no big deal. We're still looking good. Actually, we're not because he is ahead, which he shouldn't be. And now here, our cycle is pretty awkward. Luckily, the bandit goes for the spear goblins and ignores the princess. And I am forced to play a defensive goblin barrel, which you pretty much never should do. So yeah, at this point, not looking good. I have to pretty much rock it for damage. I am able to catch his miner with my gang and my knight will do a good job against the bandit. Coupled with the ice bird, he will be able to take her out. And my princess is just doing her thing on the left hand side. I rock it again. So at this point, I, I either need two rockets or one rocket and a bit of chip. Because log wouldn't be enough. Log would do... A rocket does 493 damage and a log does 96. And that adds up to 499 plus 90. That's... Uh, 586 yep no 589 yep definitely 589 and now here this prediction of the miner pretty much won me the game that was clutch and now my rocket seals the deal and that is ggwp i give him a little laugh because he threw super hard there that's gg definitely a good game and now what game should i show you guys uh let's check out this one because this one this game i think i played super well and this is a good example of how hard you can play out play your opponent now i don't know why this guy's giving me the crying face i honestly have no idea maybe because he knows he's going to lose just by looking at my name you know my name art the great it it intimidates people it really does so if you're against me you're gonna sweat no, i'm just kidding uh, so yeah, we get in some good, some decent damage on his uh, crown tower, and we're able to rocket his pump too. So rocket the pump every time, guys. You cannot afford to give them an elixir advantage. So here I locked the, uh, um, the dark prince before surrounding him because if I didn't lock, I think he has a 360 splash damage. So it would have splashed all of my goblin gang. So this was definitely the safer option. And uh, we are slightly behind the elixir at this point. I don't know why this guy's still crying. I really don't. But yeah, we're fine. We're fine. He peckers in the back. That is something I definitely do not recommend. I am just going to play my princess to cycle. I don't know why he's laughing. I really don't know what this guy's doing. But he's going to lose. Uh, so we play at Inferno to counter the P.E.K.K.A. We're going to rocket the pump. And uh, we're just gonna let the ice wizard do its thing. We really don't. Uh, actually, we can't defend the princess at this point. And even if we did, he could have just zapped her. So we just have to get our goblin barrels in, and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So here I ice spirit goblin barrel because since he has a zap and not a log, the ice spirit will be able to freeze the tower, and that would allow him to get a bunch of damage with my goblins. He does tornado, but because this guy's absolutely garbage, he isn't able to activate the king tower. He gives me another laughing face. I'll take that, baby. That was awkward. Okay, ignore that. I never said that, okay? Uh, so moving on, he plays as Dark Prince, which is questionable. Uh, he's giving me a good luck now. I think he thinks he's gonna win, which is not true. So I, I, I ice search his Dark Prince, and then I use my knight to counter the... Uh, Executioner and I rocket his pump yet again. So that is definitely some well played by me. Keeping it fast, keeping it quick, keeping it cycly. 
because that is what you have to do with a deck like this just keep cycling keep the pressure on especially against heavy decks you just cannot allow heavy decks to make big pushes like they want to lava hound golem pekka you need to keep them under control by constantly harassing them with your goblins now this was a really bad inferno placement by me and by really bad i really do mean bad it wouldn't have pulled anything but luckily I was able to get a good knife placement along with my log so that pulled his P.E.K.K.A and his Dark Prince over to my Inferno and Dark Prince is it's just a shit card and at this point I know that I've won so I just ignore his garbage riffraff right there and just rock it I don't, I don't even know how I got that damage off over there oh yeah I got it before and then I just defended so that's perfect we gave him a little crying face a little taste of his own medicine and yeah so the last replay I'm gonna show you, actually I'll show you both of these because it's really important to know how to play against hog riders when you're using this deck because hog riders are the biggest counter to lock bait. Not hog riders by itself but hog triple spell. That is one hell of an annoying deck and sometimes with that in that matchup you just have to rely on rocket cycle. So first I'm gonna show you a replay against this deck, the P.E.K.K.A hog deck. It's pretty popular in this challenge. So if you're gonna do this challenge after you watch this video, definitely watch out for this Hawk Pekka deck because pretty much everyone's using it. So again, starting off, pretty much every starting hand is ideal with this deck because you can just cycle very easily. You have all your cards will give you value, especially because they are so cheap. Here, I don't have any. Actually, yeah, I do. I I spurred his uh, Hawk and then I use my goblin gang because as i told you guys using your inferno on the hog rider is a pretty bad idea not only because it's a negative one trade but also because he can get a free lightning off thanks to the inferno and that'll just give him additional tower damage so here i tried to juke his log this is something you definitely have to try and do whenever they have whenever you're facing a deck with log and not zap Unfortunately, I didn't come. I wasn't able to completely juke his log, but it was still better than nothing because I was able to get one hit, and every hit counts with a deck like this. So he uses Pekka. I use I use my log to cycle because I had a bit of an awkward hand. It's right after I said that there are no awkward hands with that with this deck. So, whoops. But yeah, I get my princess off. You definitely need to recognize how to place your princess. I'm definitely no pro at using princesses, but I definitely do know what I'm doing. So here I use my goblin gang to count with the hog. The inferno takes care of the what you may call it, Pekka, and he goes for a pretty late lightning. And I predict his goblins. Yep, I do predict his goblins, and I know that he'll have low elixir at this point. So immediately after the bats die, I hit him up with another princess. Because this uh, heavy decks like this don't really have good answers for low cost cards. And now he wasted his lock, so I'm just gonna get Goblin Barrel immediately. Keeping the pressure on him, never l letting him have a moment to breathe. Always keep him under pressure, always make them sweat. Uh, I'm, yeah. I don't know guys, don't, don't judge me. Just let me, let me be happy. So here I'm forced to play my Inferno because if I played my Goblin Gang, he could have just... Uh, his hawk would have gotten a ton of hits off. He doesn't light thing, for, uh, fortunately. And I try to play a juke barrel, doesn't go through. He's forced to play his electro wizard to counter my princess, which I counter with my knight. And I play my ice spirit, I believe. Yep, I play my ice spirit. I play my goblin. No, I play my inferno right at the bridge because I know that his uh, electro wizard isn't in cycle and. Uh, he, he doesn't have zap or anything so I get a pretty good catch onto him and that is GGWP so what you have to recognize with this is that you have to keep the pressure on you don't you cannot allow decks like this hog rider de deck to get a moment to breathe because if they do they're just gonna log your goblin barrel every time and just keep hog lightning for the win FTW. so yeah for the final replay of the day I'm gonna show you a replay against this uh, hog, um, um, why am I lagging? This hog executioner deck, which is arguably the hardest matchup for us. So, I'm gonna show you guys how to play against it. Yeah, so starting off, nothing too special going on. He ice spirits, 
I play my princess. I'm leaking elixir a bit. Leaking elixir is not what you want to do with this deck. As I told you before, you have to keep it fast paced. Quick. Um, gotta go fast. Yes. So I try to counter his executioner with my knight, which I do pretty well. He is forced to tornado and he's able to catch my um, <sighs> goblin barrel with his log. I'm a bit tired, guys. I just got done playing this challenge and it's exhausting, but whatever. We'll get this done. We'll get this video out in time so that all of you guys should be, should be able to get the 20 wins as well. And he goes for a knight hawk rider push, which I saw coming, so I immediately log and then I play my goblin gang to counter him. Mm. Yeah, but he still gets two swings off, which is not ideal. I have to just play my goblin barrel. I try to juke him out, which I do. I do juke his log, and that's something that really helped me out in the long run. Because now his uh, lock is out of cycle, I can just quickly play my princess. I don't know why I was waiting for so long, I really shouldn't be. And now I play my knight, I play my goblin gang, and right there I'm back to my uh, goblin barrel before he has his lock. So he's forced to tornado here, but the tornado isn't going to do anything, baby. My goblins get tons of stabs off of that tower doing around 600 damage maybe more than that i don't know and my princess is still chipping away so i just play my ice spirit to cycle and this, this was a bit weird i definitely do not agree with that the executioner immediately switched targets from that um, ice spirit to the princess that was a bit questionable uh so yeah i go with the same play again i try to play a juke barrel but i think he catches it this time so well played by my opponent I immediately play my lock because I need to keep cycling with this deck because my opponent's deck doesn't have any like elixir efficient counters for the princess. So here I, yes, I am um, Inferno here and he's forced to lightning but I am ahead in damage so that is good. I've got that going for me. He does perfectly counter my um, goblin barrel but that's fine. I try to get some chip in my princess, but my opponent had a good prediction knight, so he was able to stop my princess. I don't know why I played my knight so far up front, that was a bit of a mistake by me. And here I'll catch his executioner with my ice spirit and goblin barrel again, which he will be able to log. This was a really bad um, hog placement by my opponent, and I knew that he was going to lightning, so I just rock it immediately, because here it was pretty much an even trade, 6 for 6. And this, uh, I was confident that my towers would be able to defend since uh, the, both of them were hitting the hog rider. So he goes for another hog, which I counter with my ice spirit goblin gang com combo, negating 100% of the damage from the hog rider. And here I'm looking good. All I need is maybe a couple of more chips from my goblins and uh, one more uh, rocket. So I don't. That was a questionable log from me. And now here's. Things are looking a little sketchy. He does a uh, log, but my Inferno is able to catch his hog out. And I'm able to finish him off with my Goblin Gang. And that is GG. Because he won't be able to completely defend my... Oh wait, spoke too soon. Haha. <laughs> he did a good job defending my Goblin Barrel. But that was 6 for 3 trade. So yeah, all I need at this point is one more log and a rocket. I should be able to defend his hog pretty easily. He gets a good lighting off. But that isn't going to do much at this point. All I need is one 8 elixir so that I could rock it and log his tower. And that is GGWP. Give him a little thumbs up because he had the counter deck. So yeah, that's it guys. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Really do appreciate all of your support. And um, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And best of luck to all of you in this Cloud Championship Challenge. I have been Art the Great and I'll see you guys later. Peace.